Hey, hey, welcome back. Uh, so what we want to talk about in this video is a Firebase database. So like what goes in it? How does it kind of work? Um, we've shown you a little bit about it so far. I want to kind of dive deeper and just kind of how some of the structure of this thing works. So we're only worried about the database tool right now. And really, the, one of the main messages I want to make is that it's really a JSON tree. And you'll understand that more as we go through it. Uh, so you can see some of the goals of this video. Make sure you can describe you know, how data is stored in there. Make sure you understand how you might want to structure your data. Those are some of our goals. So in order to kind of talk about this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an example uh, Firebase database that I've got. Uh, so this one is uh, from my favorite things app. So right now what I've got in this database is a key called color, um, and it points to a value, which is a string, uh, and a key called number, and it points to a value, which is a number, right? In this case, that number is actually a long. There's actually only four types of data that get saved into the Firebase database, which is really pretty cool, right? So you can see them right here. They're bools and doubles, uh, and then there's longs, and then there's strings. So it's really kind of neat that it's really just those those four things uh, that go into a Firebase database. Um, it, it, they get used in really interesting ways. So you've got this tree, and it has to end in one of those four types of values. And whenever you're saving data, um, really thinking of it this way, it's like there's keys and then there's values is one of the most important things. When you're retrieving data, you have to think about data snapshots. So if I was looking at this data and I was thinking about, hey, how was I getting it from the cloud? I would have to pick some key, um, and then that key would be a data snapshot. So in this case, uh, I could easily make four data snapshots, depending on what data I was trying to get. I could get data from here. Each data snapshot has the key, and then it's got some value. And the value is literally everything downstream of the key. Um, so in this case, the things that are downstream is just a single like primitive value, right? So it's like a double or a long or string. So this kind of represents the very simplest case of Firebase. There are, of course, more interesting things you can do. So it's a JSON tree, uh, so you can nest things in multiple layers of keys. I think I've got an example of that I can bring up here. Click a button and it should uh, update into uh, this example. So this example has a key. Uh, here it's just called map examples. And then there's two kind of top layer keys. Uh, they're called my map one, my map two. Um, and then they have under them keys which point to values, right? So you can happily like make as many nested things with keys as you want. That's why it's a tree, right? In fact, if you look at how I loaded this data in, I actually just used a JSON object. I mean, a JavaScript object is what it was at the time um, and just loaded it in, right? So that, that's all it is there. Now, the real trick is when you pull it out, uh, what snapshots do you take and how do you think about that data? So the data is the same, but how you think about it when you get it out is different. So let's say that I wanted uh, this snapshot for this key and the snapshot for this key. Well, those two data snapshots, uh, their value would actually be a map, right? So I just said, hey, there's only four types um, in Firebase, but really it's recursive as well, right? So you could have this map, um, which really is just more keys, right? So you could point to as your value one of those four primitives, or you could point to one or more keys. When you point to one or more keys, you're really a map um, or a list, but we'll talk about that later. So in this case, if I were to pull out of my, my database, hey, give me the snapshot for this key, uh, it would say, hey, the key is this string, all keys are strings, and the value is this map. Uh, and this map has three keys in it, and in this case, all three of those keys point to like a primitive like value. Uh, same thing with my map two over here. You could also think about different keys uh, being snapshots. So let's say you didn't care about this layer, you cared about the data snapshot of like this key. Um, so this key right here has its own data snapshot. It's got a key and it's got a value that goes with it. Uh, you could think about this one over here and it's actually a data snapshot as well. So this retrieval process makes you think about how you wanna look at your data. You could also kind of look at it all together. Let's say that I cared about this key here and I wanted a data snapshot for it. I mean, every key has a data snapshot. Uh, the data snapshot is the key itself plus a value. The value is everything downstream of that key. So in this case, the value for this key would be a map, um, which has two keys in the map. Um, and each of those keys points to a map. Um, and each of those 
you get the idea, it's recursive, right? So this thinking about how you retrieve it out is an important concept in Firebase. You can kind of make arbitrarily complex data. Uh, so here I'll just kind of load up an arbitrarily complex example. So this arbitrarily complex example has like three top layer keys, so key, key, key. Um, the second one you can see is actually just a, a primitive value. Uh, the third one um, just goes to a, uh, what, what a lot of people refer to as a list, but really it's also a map, right? So it's got um, a key of zero, one, and two. They're still strings, but it's array-like data, uh, which we'll get into later. Um, and then there's kind of this arbitrarily complex first one uh, that just kind of shows, you know, you can do you can do kind of whatever you want, right? So it's got, um, you know, three keys in this, and one of those keys doesn't point to value, it points to another key, um, and it just kind of sprawls like that. Another thing I'll just kind of point out is I find the second one interesting. So I just, for no real reason, chose to make a kind of a, a deep key structure. So I've got a, that uh, deep key three, deep key two, deep key one, uh, key one, two, uh, and then top key one. Um, and you can do that. You probably wouldn't choose to, but I'm just letting you know what you can do. Another thing I wanted to do with this example is what happens if you delete that, that Boolean value? So like, what happens if you take that value off? Um, do you think that it would look like this? Uh, so it just kind of like have lost the Boolean value. Uh, I can actually test it. So I'm gonna delete uh, this, val this value of false right there. So it got deleted. Um, and you notice that what happened is all those keys got swept away, right? So what actually happens, the Firebase doesn't have a, a, like a primitive at the end of the tree. Uh, all, all keys that have no primitives beneath them, they just go away, right? So in fact, that's how you delete something. You just make the value be null. Firebase takes care of cleaning up the, the mess of keys that was left over. So just kind of wanted to point that out, that everything must end in one of those four primitive values. The other thing I wanted to talk about, you kind of see it over here, is this list or array type of concept. Firebase does have arrays, um, but I would really call them array-like. Uh, and not, They're not really arrays. Um, so for example, um, I made a couple arrays here. Um, and I pushed them up. So if I push up my arrays, this is an uh, example of two arrays. I, I literally just took an array uh, and I pushed it up. And then this is what Firebase made for me in the cloud. So you can totally push an array up. Uh, you can get an array back down uh, and that works. But the way Firebase really stores it is with the only way Firebase stores things and that's as keys with values at the end. So here we've just made the keys be you know, what would have been the indices of the array, right? So like zero through six, they are technically strings. Uh, they're, they're not numbers, but it's just pointing at different values. The thing you have to be really careful about with arrays is if you if you understand how they're stored under the hood, you'll see this coming. Um, but if you um, were to get the whole array, things work fine. But if you were to delete a couple, um, so what happens if you were to delete, um, you know, the object at index one and index four and five, right? So if you did it in that order, so I delete one, and then I delete four, and then I delete five. Well, if you were in a regular program, once you deleted one, the whole array would shift down, and then you would delete four, and the whole thing would shift down. Then you delete five, and it'd, it'd actually blow up on you, right? Because there would be no five at that point. Uh, with Firebase, if I delete one, four, and five, um, it just leaves me with a sparse array at this point, right? This is actually how JavaScript works too, uh, with array-like data. So you can totally use arrays, they're, they're fine to use, just be aware of the limitations, right? And so know how they're actually stored under the hood, and then that way you'll avoid the, the classic array pitfalls. So one thing is like, if you modify your array on a client, where you like delete some things, you might be better off just pushing the whole array back up to clean up your state. Uh, when it comes to variable types, um, it depends on what system you're on, what variable types it gives you. Uh, so Android is pretty obvious. So it's got strings, booleans, longs, doubles, just like you'd expect. Maps, uh, which is just whenever that key points to another key. Um, and then it's also got list. But again, I warn you about that array-like behavior. Um, in iOS, uh, it's got NS strings. So this is for Objective-C. Um, NS number, which actually uh, encompasses Boolean longs and doubles, uh, and then dictionaries are its equivalent of maps, and NS array is its equivalent of the list. Um, there are also types in JavaScript, but to be honest, since JavaScript is not strongly typed, usually people don't even care about the types that much in JavaScript. 
I mean, if you're doing TypeScript, it's still you know, strings and numbers and pools or booleans. I forget what TypeScript uses. Um, but whenever you're retrieving things, you do have to care about what type of data this is. The other thing I wanted to point out is that there are a lot of patterns uh, that you'll see a lot. Um, and one pattern that you'll see an awful lot is um, where there's like a path to something. I'll just load it up here. A path to something, usually the path is like the type of object that it is, and then a whole bunch of objects in there. Uh, you can see these keys here are auto-generated. Whenever you do a push to Firebase, it generates a key for you. And then everything in here is the same type of object, right? So in this case, they just this object has a my label and a my value. So I just thought I'd mention that you'll see this pattern a lot, uh, where there's kind of this repeated objects uh, philosophy. And we'll, we'll uh, with movie quotes, you'll really start to understand that better. You'll also see some patterns once you start doing auth to where you like um, organize things by people's UIDs. Uh, so a UID, if somebody signs in with Google, their UID might be com.google. Uh, this example is old, so it just says Google. Um, and then some number. Um, you might want to silo people's data to like make sure it's private to where only they can see it. And a pattern you'll see a lot is where things are organized by UID. If you use Rose Fire, which we'll do in later units, the UID is actually just your Rose Home and username, uh, but that's a pattern you'll see a lot. You can also do off with Twitter, Facebook, um, GitHub, email password. We'll cover those in later videos, but that's a pattern you're going to see, so I thought I'd mention it. Um, another common pattern that you need to be careful of with Firebase is that when you get a data snapshot, it gets the key and everything beneath it. Uh, so for example, let's say I um, was structuring things for like grades. So I'm an instructor, um, I teach multiple courses, and so I could put like my name underneath my key, um, and then like uh, my courses all underneath my key, and then each courses has assignments, and each assignment has students, and all those students have grades, and I could put that all under my key, like structure it like very nested. Uh, but if I wanted to get my name, I would have to get all the data. <laughs> um, and that's just how Firebase works. So when you get a piece of data, you get everything beneath it, like always. So to avoid that, that like extra overhead, you keep your data very flat. Uh, so in this example here, I've kind of got like courses, which are a bunch of my courses, uh, projects, which are like our individual projects, and like this is my users, uh, and I've got things in here. And so the structure of keeping things very flat is a pattern you'll see a lot. Now regularly, you will have to connect things. Uh, that's fine. So here I've got courses, uh, and courses have owners, um, and my owners are a bunch of keys, so each owner in it has a key. When you have repeated fields, a pattern you'll see a lot is where you, the key is true. It just like says the key is part of the owner's list. So you can see that like this key points to somebody that's down in my users here, right? Valtel here, I can see that he is an instructor for this course. It looks like it ends in TF. So he's an instructor for this course. And sure enough, you can see that here in the owners, uh, we've got Baltel. So this is a doubly linked example. Usually you'll just singly link data, but I thought I'd show you another pattern of referencing other people's keys, or sorry, keys to other places in your database. So I could talk more, uh, but that would be pointless because you can only learn so much at one time. Uh, takeaway messages that I want you to do is that Firebase database is a JSON tree. Um, trees always end with a, a leaf real value, which is a string double long or boolean. Um, and then whenever you think about data snapshots, which is retrieving things, you're basically just asking for a key and everything downstream of that key. And if the thing downstream is one of those four primitives, it'll just give you that value. If it's a key or, or multiple keys, um, it'll be a map or a list if you want to think of it as a list. Cool. So hopefully this gives you a better uh, concept as you kind of start moving forwards and you start doing more with Firebase database. All right. See you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.